welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television, coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Code of Conduct Tribunal fixes April 18th to deliver judgment in the case of false declaration and non-declaration of assets against the suspended Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onoge. Birthday celebrations turned tragic as 15 people are killed and 11 others injured in an attack in Akwanga, local government area of Nasarawa State. Acting Inspector General of Police vows to hold area commanders, DPOs and line officers responsible for infractions by policemen under their command. And fire engulfs the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Firefighters battle to put out blaze. ChannelCV.com has more information for you. And on YouTube.com forward slash channels web, you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channel TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news and updates on the go, the Channel TV and Channel's 24 app has an eyewitness feature that you can use to share pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Let's install the app, tap and swipe to reveal the menu and then follow the instructions. All area commanders, divisional police officers and line officers will be held responsible for any operational misbehavior of their men. Those are the exact words of the Acting Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, during an interactive session with senior police officers in Lagos. Mr. Adamu warned that anyone involved in the killing of unarmed civilians will be tried, dismissed from the service and charged for murder. Very senior police officers, area commanders and divisional police officers amongst other ranks are present at the police college parade ground in Ikeja, Lagos. They converge for an emergency interactive session with the Inspector General of Police over the recent extrajudicial killings in Lagos in the last few weeks. Muhammad Abubakar Adamu. Visibly sad over the spate of unwarranted bloodshed by policemen in Lagos, the police boss talks tough on the next line of action. I'm sending this note of warning loud and clear that any police personnel that insists on being incorrigible by engaging in abuse of his or her powers or to misuse his weapon with, with fatal outcomes and in utter disregard to statutory provisions will be arrested, investigated through our internal discipline machinery and if found probable, shall be dismissed from service. While re-emphasizing when a policeman should use a firearm, the IGP explains other possible measures to halt the killings. And weapon system such as electromuscular disruption technology, which is commonly known as teaser or strong guns by the police for routine patrol, arrest, du arrest duties, and other low risk operations. To round up his intervention trip to Lagos, Mr. Adamo pays a visit to the governor of the state. We know that the officers of the Nigerian police, they have been, I mean, they are, they are under pressure, to, to say the least. We are having all just about 3,000 police officers against 24 million people in Lagos. Obviously, they will be stretched and we will continue to talk to ourselves. On our own part also as a government, we will continue to support the Nigerian police to make sure that they carry out their duties lawfully and also to have that human face that we need to continue to uphold peace in the country. With two unjustified killings in the last two weeks, the expectation is that all matching orders by the police boss would be translated into action with the desired effect seen as quickly as possible. Let's cross over to Abuja now. Here's Ibrahim Madra. Ibrahim. Good to hear from you, Ijoma. Now, the Joint Civil Society Action Against Extrajudicial Killing is asking the Inspector General of Police to probe the circumstances surrounding the alleged murder of a civil defense officer, Mr. Ogajumbo, by policemen. Addressing a news conference in Abuja, the convener of the group, Mr. Paul Ede, debunks claims by the police that the NSCDC officer slumped at the Nyanya police station while being interrogated for allegedly contravening traffic rules. 
The Civil Society Group insists that independent findings reveal that Mr. Jumbo was battered to death on March the 20th, 2019. Our demands are as follows. One, that the Inspector General of Police should immediately constitute a commission of inquiry to investigate all cases of extrajudicial killings by officers of the Nigerian Police Force. Two, that the Inspector General of Police dismiss and prosecute any police officer found culpable in the killing of innocent Nigerians to serve as a deterrent to other officers who may be intending to commit a similar act. Three, that Mr. Igekele Ogunfemi, the divisional police officer of Nyanya Police Station, and his men on duty on that day that participated in the beating of Oga Jumbo be immediately arrested along with the two traffic wardens that have been said to be in police custody, <clears throat> investigated and prosecuted accordingly. And now to politics. The 2019 general elections in Nigeria have come and gone, but the lessons learned remain fresh in the minds of citizens, especially young politicians who took advantage of the Not Too Young to Run Act. Vote buying and the lack of internal democracy in political parties has been identified as some of the challenges that stood in the way of many young politicians in the just concluded elections. This came up at a post elections reflection meeting organized by the Youth Initiative for Advocacy, Growth and Advancement, Yaga, in Abuja. Wow. <laughs> On May 31st, 2018, President Muhammad Buhari signed into law the bill that reduces the age requirement for people seeking elective positions in Nigeria. That legislation, which is popularly referred to as the Not Too Young to Run Act, opened the political space for several young people to contest in the just concluded 2019 general elections. Political atmosphere, system, and environment. At this meeting in Abuja, members of the Youth Initiative for Advocacy, Growth and Advancement, Yega, are meeting with a young female contestant for a post election reflection. The meeting is to help young people, especially female politicians, to strategize for the 2023 general elections. In order to draw up our, our, our next lines of action or engagement for 2023, we also need to sit back and reflect on how did we um, perform in the elections, how did we experience the elections in our different communities, constituencies and states. The reason why we are here and why we are doing this is because we feel that there is a special need as far as the young woman is concerned in Nigeria to hear from you what were the challenges and what do you think we can do better? There were over 2,900 female politicians that contested the 2019 general elections, both at the federal and state levels. Only 57 women emerged winners, thereby representing 3.83% of all the positions contested for. Some of the young female candidates narrate their experience. And what I did when I got into Action Alliance was, first of all, look at how to support the party in structuring the party at the local level, at the constitutional, at the constitu to constituency level, and also looking at how to open up the avenue by registering more women in the party. I don't have money, but I have legs. I have mouth. I have mouth to talk, I have mouth to shout, I have legs to walk. And I have eyes to see. Those that I know that, oh, they can really help me. I'll go to them. I will appeal, even if they will not accept. We also have this challenge of those communities are being ruled by just a particular person. It's either the, you know, they have these Zion churches, white garment churches, you know, and the chiefs. So they just come up and say, no, this is who we are going to be working for. And whatever they say becomes final. Although not so many young people emerge winners in the elections, some political voters believe that the political composition could change in 2023 with more young persons occupying elective positions. More on politics. The senator representing River South East Senatorial District, Magnus Abbey, has been speaking on the way forward for his party after the APC in the state was left out of the ballot in the just-concluded governorship election. 
Senator Abe, a former APC factional governorship candidate who was speaking at a meeting with stakeholders from his faction in Port Harcourt, the state capital, asked the party to learn from its past errors in order to forge ahead. Our correspondent Emmanuel Ray reports. This is the first meeting the senator representing River South East and a former factional candidate of the APC in River State will be having with the supporters after the governorship election in the state. It is a stakeholders gathering and it is time perhaps to look back at the circumstances surrounding the party's failure to be on the ballot. We have come out to say that moving forward our state can be better, things can be done better, things can be done in better ways and that every single human being who is a member of the All Progressives Congress in River State is deserving of respect, should be treated with respect, should be spoken to with respect and should be listened to even when people don't agree with you. The member representing Equiri MOA constituency in the Federal House of Representatives believes there is life after the elections. 2019 is not the end of politics in Nigeria, is it? No. There will be 2023, after 2023 there will be another 2020 something. For the factional state chairman, the party can be stronger together. I, however, there are about some of the city and government of party Facebook by doing this, we have just ensured that our great party should actually pass through the government of political refinements and will hopefully emerge stronger in the taking edges, principles and practice. These are ventures which determine a new party in the political mind of the electorate and will guarantee political victory moving forward. For now, Many will have their eyes on what happens next for the party in the state. Emmanuel Irain, Channels Television News. Time for a short break, but when the news at 10 return, Nigeria's Minister of Budget and National Planning gives details of the 2019 budget and state of the country's economy at the just concluded meetings of the World Bank and IMF. Atom Business News, who join us again.